Hi, I'm T from Pilates Pro Maintenance. Today I'm here with Grads and we are servicing the main wheels on the Grads Reformer. We have already removed the main wheels off the carriage, off the casters. We have all the washers next to each other and all the screws and nuts all accounted for. I have two, I do have two extra wheels here today that I want to show you from a reformer that haven't been maintenance in a little longer than it should have. Um, and I just want you to see what happens when you don't service the reformer for a really long time, which is that the washer gets really stuck to the wheel. And this one actually came off pretty easy, but some washers can um, become really basically solidified onto the wheel with the grease that has dried up over it. Another thing that happens is that the actual grease that's around the wheel hardens and it solidifies a lot harder to take off and making your ride in the reformer a lot bumpier. Um, you can see that hair just tangles around in and around the wheel and around the washer when not serviced in a long time, as well as the axle screw that goes inside the wheel. Same thing happens when you wait um, longer than, than the time you should for service. Um, the grease will harden, uh, the hair starts wrapping around the thread, um, you'll have more resistance um, to, to the wheel, to the screw. It's basically like adding another half a spring if all your wheels have this much uh, debris and, and friction to them. Um, the amount of time that you should service a reformer, it depends on usage. It depends on whether you're running a teacher training program, whether you use it every day, whether it's been in storage for how long. We recommend usually at least once a year to service the reformer, regardless of usage. You might want to do a safety check at least once a month um, to make sure all the nuts and bolts are tight and the screws are tight, your headrest won't slip off, that the foot bar is safe. It's basically an entire safety check of the reformer. Um, but as far as the, uh, the maintenance of the wheels, at least once a year, regardless of usage. If, if it is being used in, in like a teacher training program during the whole day, then we recommend at least once to twice a month, uh, once a month to every other month for the main wheels. Um, the service the service does vary for the side wheels. They don't wear out as much. Um, the main wheels are what take the more of the wear and tear of the reformer. When the minute you sit on the reformer, this these are the wheels that are working, that are carrying your weight, and are sliding back and forth on the track, regardless of the exercise you're doing. The side wheels really only come into play when you're using one spring or when you're doing one-sided exercises, they keep the carriage of the reformer within the frame and, and straight, and that's the only time they're really being used. And they don't really have much pressure on them because the weight um, of, of, of the client and, and, and whoever's using the reformer really goes onto the main wheels, onto the tracks. Servicing the main wheels uh, entitles basically just cleaning off all the old grease off every component that you have the casters, the washers, the axle screws, the nuts, and the wheels in and outside of it, and basically replacing it with new lithium grease. So now I'm going to go ahead and use these pre-cut pieces of paper towels that I have to just clean off the old grease of all these old screws. When you clean the screw, you should have a nice, smooth, shiny surface with no old grease at all. I do have a garbage bag right in the well in, be, in between my legs where I'm just going to keep dropping all the Q-tips and, and paper towels that I will be using during the service. I will give the, the bad screw a wipe as well so you can see the difference as to what it looks like, as to how it's, what it's supposed to look like. So I've only cleaned the top half of the screw so far and I will just clean the bottom half now so you can see. And sometimes you may have to literally untangle the, the hair that's in the thread, um, depending on the, the amount of time that the reformer has not been serviced. Um, the thread the, it gets filled with um, grease and hair, which can solidify pretty harshly. This one is not that bad, but be prepared to spend a little extra time if your reformer hasn't been serviced in a long time. And again, 
staying uniform will be key to this. If I'm cleaning screws, if I'm cleaning the washers or, or wheels, then that's all I'm doing for this period of time to all the reformers that I will be servicing. I won't go from cleaning screws to a safety check, and I won't go back from a safety check to cleaning wheels. The time of cleaning wheels is this, and, and this is the time I'll clean all the wheels to every reformer that I'm servicing. This will save you time, and it'll help you stay organized and not lose any parts um, to the wheels or the reformer. Do use the paper towels or, or if you're using rags, do use them entirely, but don't recycle them. Um, it will defeat the whole purpose of, of the service. The, the point is to remove the old grease and add the new one without the mixing of those two. So using the same Q-tip or the same paper towel would only increase the chances of you using the old grease that can have debris, it can have um, some of the old hair that you don't want on the new service. Um, one thing that, that we've experienced is people doing their own service and doing it quite quickly in, in, in a way that they didn't really get the grease in, around the screw. Um, so when they put the wheel back on, it's actually louder than when they took it off or the problem persists and the, or, or they feel like what the service they did did not work. Um, many parts of this can, can cause that to go wrong. And one of them is recycling the, the Q-tips or paper towels. Another one is moving too quickly where the grease that you put on actually comes off on the way of put, while putting the wheels back on. And that will just extend the amount of time that you're going to work on your reformer because you'll end up removing the wheels again and just try doing the service all over again. I am now cleaning the washers. And you may notice that the washers are actually pretty white. The white nylon washers when they're clean. As opposed to maybe this one that's not so clean. Also, the reason we pre-cut piece, pieces of paper towels is because this would ha help us save the amount of material that you are using per service. If you use large pieces of paper towel, chances are you won't use the entire thing before you think you have to get rid of it, which um, will make you run through more material than you should during your service. And even within the small system, within the system, basically if, if I'm cleaning washers here, then that's also all I'm doing. Although I'm cleaning grease in general, um, I won't switch from cleaning the washers to that wheel, to back to a washer, to a screw. I'll try to stick with the washers while I'm cleaning washers, screws while I'm cleaning screws, and then wheels when I'm cleaning wheels. May not be such a big deal with just, um one reformer and four wheels, but it just, it gets a lot more complex the bigger the service is. You might find it difficult to clean uh, the washers, specifically with gloves on. If you do decide to, to clean the screws, washers, and nuts without the gloves, 
just remember that once you you're done with the cleaning and you apply the new grease you would have to completely wash or clean your hands or just put on a new pair of gloves before turning everything back over to decrease the the possibility of you putting grease on the vinyl or on the track or on the frame when you're putting everything back together since you've been dealing with with all this grease Okay. You might find that some of the thread can hold hair. Just make sure that everything you clean is good and ready to go. And that you don't have to come back to it. Now we're going to clean the wheels themselves. We usually start by wiping down just the excess grease that builds up on the exterior of the wheel. And again, this is a reformer that has been serviced quite often. But here's uh, an example of a wheel that doesn't get serviced quite often. Um, the grease starts changing color. It starts becoming more and more black um, to the point that it's actually just a, a black, hard, um, solidified grease or onto the wheel. It makes the ride very bumpy when you're using the reformer. So just give it a general wipe on the outside and we'll get to the inside of the wheel in a second. It may feel like you're saving time if you just clean the wheel entirely and, and just kind of grab the Q-tips now and clean all the wheel in every way, but it's actually uh, counterproductive to, to, like I said, go from one activity to the, to the other. If you're cleaning the outside of the wheel, just clean them all. Um, chances are you even build a rhythm to it and, and stay within that rhythm to, to keep doing that one task that you're doing until you have to change to do anything else. Once the exterior of the wheels are clean, this is the time where you would grab the Q-tips. And again, you're going to, to use these um, thoroughly. First, I'm going to clean the the um, the wedge that's on the outside of the wheel there's a crease that runs right outside the ring of the wheel and again this is a very serviced reformer let's just look at that wheel that wasn't serviced so often to see if they have any differences all right so basically this is the difference between the q-tip that comes out of just the crease that's on the outside of the wheel and not to mention also, you know, the exterior of the wheel itself. I'll just pass the Q-tip over so you guys can see all the hair and debris that could actually build up just on the exterior of the wheel, which eventually starts wrapping around the screw, creating a lot more friction and making the ride either what, what we get, the descriptions we get is that the carriage is sticking or the carriage is not coming back in, or it's just really hard to push out which is all this friction of stuff around the screw and the wheel when we go to service. That was the bad wheel, not part of this reformer. Next, we'll clean the inside of the wheel. We'll start using the Q-tips actually to clean all the inside parts. Once the head of the Q-tip gets used, just flip over to the other side, use it all up as well, and get rid of it and use a, a different Q-tip. Trying to, to clean the whole wheel with one Q-tip, chances are it won't work, and you'll just end up moving the same grease back and forth, basically spreading it around. Eventually you will come out with a completely white Q-tip. You'll, you'll put it in the wheel, it'll come out, and both both ends would just be white because all the grease is cleaned off. If you haven't serviced your reformer in a while, there's a chance you may use a lot more than five to 10 Q-tips per wheel, just cleaning the inside. If you notice that the 
the grease just doesn't come off, try taking a look inside the shaft of the wheel and see if there's any what we call grease boogers that are stuck inside the shaft that basically are just solidified pieces of grease that you're just rubbing the surface off and that's why your Q-tip keeps coming out dirty. Um, in that case, I would suggest maybe dipping the Q-tip into some degreaser and then just degreasing that one little part of the shaft of the wheel um, smoothly. You, you just basically scrub it out with, with, with the Q-tip itself. We don't recommend to use a wire brush um, although it's the, the logical thing to go to because you could actually scratch the inside of the wheel, creating the ride again bumpier and having to even replace the wheel in the future. So just taking your time with some Q-tips and degreaser and possibly if not even use, using the degreaser if you don't have to, just Q-tips, that's the best um, way to service and clean the inside of the wheel. I'm just going to go ahead and clean the inside of all the wheels now. Another thing you want to clean when you are done with the wheels and the washers and the nuts is the casters themselves. The casters themselves actually hold a lot of grease from the washers or the wheels or even putting them back in. They eventually start building up a lot of grease onto them. And I do have an example, it's just over there. <laughs> So you want to just basically clean the inside and outside of the caster. We will we just basically wrap the paper towel around that whole wing of the caster and wipe it down thoroughly. Do the same thing to both sides. Lastly, you're going to use the Q-tips again to just clean the insides of the casters inside the ring where the screws are going to fit in. So now that we have cleaned all the wheels, the washers, the axle screws, and the nuts, as well as the casters, we're ready to put the white lithium grease, the new white lithium grease, back onto all the components and put it all back together. We like to use uh, this specific type of, of container because with the nozzle, you can just stay um, very precise as to where you want to put grease. We've had um, a small bucket where you can use an applicator, kind of like a Q-tip to add it onto things. It just creates more, more chances of, of you making a mess. Um, the nozzle is the best way we found it to, to apply. We're going to start by adding two dots of grease onto the washers. and I'll explain why in one second. Not much grease, just enough grease. Just enough grease basically to put the washers back onto the wheel without it falling. So we're just using the grease kind of as an adhesive to stick onto the wheel. Full disclosure is that I would never touch a wheel or a tool or anything while I'm doing the grease. Like I mentioned earlier, and like I will continue to reiterate, the organization, the delicacy of this equipment is a big part of the service. Um, when you are dealing with the grease, try to only deal with the grease. If you're adding grease onto the washers, then you're doing it to all the washers of all the reformers and all the screws. And wherever the grease belongs is when you're using it. Once you're done with the grease, you're capping it away, and there's a chance you will never use it again for that service. It decreases the chances of you going back and forth, and where's the cap, and where's the grease, and, and all that confusion just goes away when you stay um, uniform with the service. Um, this is the time where I would be greasing everything. I'd put it on these washers. I'm going to add it onto the screws, and I will do the same to all of the reformers. The way to add the screw, the way to add white lithium grease onto the main wheels axle screw is by adding grease all the way from the head of the screw down to the threaded part but not on the threaded part what you want to do is add grease in a flat manner what i mean is not only apply it onto the screw but then you would have to flatten it out basically onto the screw and not let it stick out Otherwise, when you're putting the screw back into the washer and in between the casters, all the grease will just come out 
and it'll defeat the purpose of the of the service. You will have a rattly wheel anyway. Um, even though you you did most of the things right, you cleaned it well. You did apply grease. Uh, you did everything except put it in properly or 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 add too much grease where it all came off on the way back in. And we'll go over on how to put it all back together. You can place it down in any way. It will not um it will not remove all the grease off the screw as long as you have put it around the whole circumference of the screw, but in a very flat manner. No reason to put it onto the thread or the actual head of the screw, just onto the axle part, which is the smooth, round part of the axle screw. You want to cover the whole surface of, of that smooth part of the axle screw, but you don't want to add so much that it's just going to come off when you're adding the screw back onto the wheel. And as you guys can see, this is why we prefer the nozzled paste tube um, type of applicator for the white lithium grease. It's just a lot more convenient when adding it to so many small components. It's also convenient to keep moving and not having to go back and forth from the from the source of the grease to the to the screw. Okay. We are done greasing the adding grease to, to the washers, to the axle screws. And assuming that this is the only reformer I'm doing and these are the only wheels I'm doing, I am officially done with the grease. If I were doing any other wheels or any other reformers, um, I would keep this in my hand and I'll go over and I'll add grease to wherever it goes. For now, we are completely done with it. So we're going to just cap it off and put it away. Be sure to wipe your hands very often as you're doing the service. Keep uh, uh, the same paper towel that you're using to cover and to clean. Keep keep it handy also for your hands and just try to to stay as clean as possible, especially if you're not wearing gloves. Um, you don't want to add grease onto the, the aluminum parts or the wood parts of the reformer, the frame, vinyl, anywhere other than the actual screw and the washer where it belongs. Now let's add the, we're going to put the washers back onto the wheels. And at this time you could even stand your wheels up if you like on the, This is when stain uniform comes in handy, when you're looking for all your washers, you're looking for all your nuts, you're looking for all your parts, and they're all in the same place. Um, you didn't forget to clean any of them because they, they were all done in at the same time, um, in the same section, and you don't have to worry about where they went or if you forgot to do any of them. Once all the washers are back, it's time to put the wheels back into the casters. Placing the wheels back into the casters, you're going to grab one wheel and one axle screw. This is where it might get tricky. To put the wheel back, first the letters and the information of the wheel must always face the exterior of the reformer. So you basically want to be able to see the information of the wheel if you just picked up the carriage. That's the way they really face. The screw, the actual screw, will always go from the outside in. Basically, the head of the screw will be in the exterior of the carriage, and the threaded part will be in the interior of the carriage. If this is flipped by any chance, by any way, um, the caster shouldn't allow you to do it. The caster is designed to only fit the screw in one direction, but if for any reason um, your upholster took off the entire caster to upholster your reformer, and the screws facing the exterior, or if you can get it for some reason the other way, 
But what happened is that the threaded part of the screw will scratch the inside of the frame. You'll hear a loud screeching noise, um, which will be very obvious that something's wrong with the carriage. It will also damage the, the frame of the carriage. So it'll always go from the outside in with the screw, information of the wheel facing out. Remember the two washers are only held together by the bit of white lithium grease you put on them. Putting them into this tight space is going to be the tricky part without knocking the washers off the wheel. You're basically going to take really take your time for this part of the wheel and just slide it right in between. You will take the axle screw and this is where it really gets tricky. You don't want to just shove the screw in there. What you want to do is put just a little enough in to hold the washer, then start spinning the screw clockwise into the shaft of the wheel. The reason being is that you want this grease to stay on the screw or to spread evenly inside the wheel as you're putting it in. Make sure the other washer doesn't fall. If it does fall, you'll just remove the screw and, and repeat the process to put it back on. You might have to add a little more white lithium grease onto the washer if it does fall off and you will put it all the way in. You will repeat this with all the wheels before you tighten the, the nuts onto them. Again, you grab a screw, you grab a wheel with both washers. I'll just go to the side that's a little closer. The information of the wheel faces outside of the reformer. The screw goes from outside, from the exterior to the interior of the reformer. Watch the, car watch the washers, that they don't fall off when you're sliding it in between the casters. The metal of the casters can hit the washer, they, will fall, they can fall off. Um, they can just slide off center from, from the center of the wheel and not let you put the screw in. But it's very important to just take your time with this part. Again, the screw is not threaded onto the wheel, but we are still going to spin it onto the shaft to spread the grease inside the wheel and around the screw. What happens if you just shove the screw in there is that all the grease will just come off and stay right here on the outside of the caster. If you have to pull the screw back out a little as you spin it, do that and just go back in, spinning in the same direction to help spread the grease around. Once, both wa once the screw is through both washers, you just push it the rest of the little way in and you should be done. A little excess grease is always going to come out. What you want to decrease is the amount of grease that comes out when you finish putting the screw in. The more grease came out, the less grease is inside the wheel and the less of the work you did. Um, you shouldn't have any noise when you spin the wheel once the, the screw is properly lubricated, um, which comes, brings the question, how, how do I know when to service my wheel? You can literally just spin a wheel and it, you can hear the rattling and the, and the crackling in between the wheel and the extra screw um, before you even take them off to see if they need service. This is an example of all the grease coming off when you're pushing the screw in. So for this screw, you can see how all the grease is staying on the outside of it, which I will remove and see why that's happening. If I were to remove the screw, you'll see parts of the screw without any grease on it at all, 
which means it came off on the way in. A lot of times this happens, you don't see it, you put the screw all the way in, you assume that you did a great job, and the wheel continues to crackle. Meanwhile, you took most of the grease off on your way in. So, let's see why that actually happened. So a big part about doing this slowly, guys, is, is this. We added grease to the screw. We put the screw back. Um, on, its, on the way putting it in, some of the grease came off, which means that I have to go back to opening the white lithium grease, adding grease back on. The length of time plus the, uh, the risk of me putting grease now on places where it doesn't belong is what I try to avoid when teaching the system that, that we use to service the equipment. You don't want to go back and forth between these things. It just gets extensive. It's very time consuming. Um, it, it, it is also hard work. Your back will hurt from sitting in certain positions, from lifting the carriage, putting it back. So decreasing the amount of mistakes is just going to make your, your life a lot easier when servicing your equipment. I'm just gonna go ahead and clean the rest of this grease off. I'm going to reapply it and see where, where the grease went wrong. How did it all come off? Uh, a common reason that I have seen for why the grease comes completely off is that the, the washer is really tight. If the washer basically scrapes against the, the exterior of the screw as you put it in, it will be taking off all the grease as you slide it in. And that's one of the reasons I've seen before for why the, all the grease comes off, even though you did all the steps right. Let's try that again. Nice. Again, take your time to spin the screw in there. It's going to ensure that as much grease as possible gets inside between the, the wheel and the screw, and you can get the right lubrication. I'm going to wipe down the excess from the last time I put it in and this time. Something we usually do at the end, but since this is very excessive, I just want to keep it from getting on anything else and get rid of it now. The information facing outward, screw facing in. Balance the washers in that space. They might move around. This takes a little practice. And spin the screw on its way in. Now that all the wheels are on the casters, you can go ahead and add all the nuts back. Just hand tighten them on. 
So don't grab your tools just yet. Don't grab your tools, especially it's not so tight in one wheel. And then grab a nut to put it on another wheel and back to the tools. Just decreases the, the amount of errors you can make. So something I have seen for this these wheels again, the wheels that are close to the to the leather straps. When adding the nut back on, it may be difficult to to get the nut onto the screw again. You might have to push the screw thread flushed to the caster. So you're not taking the screw out of the wheel or out of the caster or out of the washers at all. All you want to make is enough room to put the nut right back into the slot where it was. Again, the nut fits in between the caster for the straps and it fits in between the caster for the main wheels. Meaning there's no other tool that you can fit other than the wrench and there's no other way to get the nut screwed onto the screw without slipping it in there then the screw will fit right in the center and you can hand tighten it. Otherwise you would think that the screw have been has been bent or something moved in which it doesn't align properly, but it's the only way to put the, the nut back once you take it off. Now that all the wheels are in their place and the nuts have been hand tightened onto the screws, it is time to tighten all the wheels back into place. We're going to grab our number 13 wrench or one half, whichever one you have chosen. And we're just going to tighten all the nuts and the wheels back to where they go. Common question. How tight do these wheels really go? The best way to judge how tight the wheels go is by tightening them all the way to the point where they don't move and then going back half a turn from there. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So this is too tight. Too tight wheel doesn't free spin. It does spin, but it doesn't free spin. It has a lot of friction to it. Just tight enough is half a turn back from that where the wheel will free spin. So it's just tight enough that you do have some give to each side. It will move. Um, the nut is as tight as it could be without causing friction onto the wheel. It should just have a free spin. It should spin around three, four times before it stops. And that's the perfect tightness. Um, once, once you get the the distance in between the washers um, into your, your memory or muscle memory. You don't need to go all the way tight and then halfway back from there, you will just be able to gauge exactly how tight the wheel should be where it doesn't fall off or, or seem loose or too rattly um, or too tight where it causes so much friction that it feels like an extra spring is on the reformer. Again, uniform guys, once you're using the tools, is the only time you're using the tools to tighten all the wheels that require these tools on all the reformers that you worked on that require these tools. So the slipping is not good. If your tool continues to slip, basically when you're putting it on, one of two things, either you might want to change the tools you're using to some that give you a better grip, or there's a lot of grease on the tools themselves and the nuts and bolts from the service you just did. Some grease always comes out of the end of the screw when, when you're sliding it back into the caster. So what I would do in this case is, I'll grab the same paper towels that I have been using to clean the, the wheels and I would simply just clean the, the, the actual tools that we use to clean. They do hold a lot of grease and that grease can cause you to keep slipping. And what the slipping does is that it damages the, it damages the actual screw and eventually you won't be able to either to take it off or put it on, causing you to have a, a reformer out of service when you were only trying to service it. So 
just going to go ahead and clean the socket wrench as well. As you can see, they do get pretty greasy inside. So the same way we service our equipment, we also service our tools because the tools are the ones that service our equipment, right? Again, when tightening the wheels that are closer to the to the straps on the ground reformer, you might have to push the nut into the caster so you can actually slip the wrench in there and grab the nut. Once you have the nut, then you can just crank the wrench that's on the outside or the socket wrench that you have for the screw. Switch sides. Now that all the wheels are tightened, you should be done with those wrenches. Just ensure that you tighten up all the wheels and that when you spin them, none of them make any noise at all. They should literally be spinning in silence. And that's how you know that the service for the side wheels is done. And now you're ready to clean up and get all the parts off of the reformer.